Today I got another unique build for you. It's going to be a heavy armor barbarian. Now, before we can begin talking about the heavy armor barbarian, we need to discuss some rules because there is an argument for this build not being legitimate, but there is also an argument for it being legitimate. So I wanna go over that really quickly. So the idea behind this build is that we are going to be a totem bear barbarian. Now, the interesting thing about the totem barbarians is that they have different rage specifications than the OG class. The OG class says if you're wearing heavy armor, you don't get any of the benefits you normally get in the OG class being resistance to damage, the extra damage output that you give, as well as the advantage on strength checks and saving throws. However, when you move over to the totem side of things, some of the totems, elk and eagle specifically, say if you're raging and not wearing heavy armor, while the other three, being bear, wolf, and tiger, do not specify that heavy armor. So rules as written say that the bear, the wolf, and the tiger get those benefits even while wearing heavy armor. If we're talking rules as written, this works, clear as day. However, Jeremy Crawford did weigh in and said rules as intended says that, that you cannot have any benefits of rage if you're wearing the heavy armor. So it depends if you're going rules as written or rules as intended, according to Jeremy Crawford. For the sake of this video, we are going rules as written because I want to make a heavy armor barbarian. So that's what we're doing. So with that out of the way, what do we end up becoming? Well, we end up becoming a tank and we end up becoming a classic tank. I think in D&D, a lot of tanking is passive tanking, fear conditions, or marking them as an ancestral guardians barbarian, for example. This tank is all about having high AC, high HP, high resistances, and then making them not have a choice. They either have to attack us or attack our allies at disadvantage. Now, with all that being said, let's get into it and let's start with what are the advantages of taking heavy armor? You're ultimately only getting plus one AC. Is it really worth giving up all those rage benefits? Well, you're getting plus one AC, but you're also able to completely dump your dexterity stat because we don't rely on it for our defenses at all anymore, which means that we can invest a lot more into our wisdom score. And barbarians are notoriously terrible at wisdom saves. Not this build. This build is a wall in and of itself. And I didn't want my wall to fall to simple wisdom saves. So that's the core of why I decided to do this. You get more AC, but you also get better wisdom saves. As for our stats, it'll surprise no one that it goes strength as our primary, constitution as our secondary, and wisdom as our tertiary. The other ones are all open to being dropped. Well, how about our lineage? Well, Githsarai are perfect for this build. Not only are they giving us psychic resistance, which is the only resistance that bear barbarians lack, so now we have resistance to everything, but they also give us advantage on charmed and frightened saves, which are the two most common wisdom saves that we're going to be facing. So in between our better wisdom stat than normal and the Githsarai's mental fortitude abilities, we have way better saves than a barbarian normally would. We're also not always going to be raging, and shield is a great spell for a tank during that time frame. Furthermore, I love having Mage Hand and Detect Thoughts as out of combat things we can do. Barbarians are notoriously known for not having a ton out of combat to do. Those two spells definitely help. Now we're getting several key things by doing these first five levels in Battlemaster. First, we're setting up ourselves with heavy armor proficiency, which we absolutely need. This build would not be possible otherwise. We're then going to follow that up with a defensive fighting style. That plus one to AC means that once we get plate, we're gonna have 21 to our AC. Why Battlemaster for a tanky build? Well, here's the cool thing about Battlemaster. How we're tanking is going to be completely reliant on the Sentinel feat. And what we need is really accurate Sentinel attacks to make this build work. Now by having precision attack, we can make those sentinel attacks really, really likely to land, which means we're doing our job a lot better. On top of that, we're going to get a couple extra maneuvers. I'm taking bait and switch because if one of our teammates are in a bad situation, we can go get them out of that situation. And instead of them being the front line, we can replace them as the front line where we're meant to be. I also like menacing attack. Menacing attack is excellent because it's going to give disadvantage against attacks to our whole team, as well as control their movement. Fear is a great tanking condition. It's not going to be the primary primary thing we do, but if we're not looking for that opportunity attack, menacing attack is our next follow-up. So in other words, precision attack is really what we want to be spending our superiority dice on in combination with the sentinel feet. After that, I'm looking at bait and switch to make sure our teammates are in good position, and menacing attack is our backup in case that strategy isn't completely viable in this moment. Now level 6 through 8 is when we're going to be going into Barbarian. The first two levels, we're honestly not getting much. It's an investment level because our rage doesn't work until we get our subclass. So basically those 
first two levels are only giving us danger sense, which we will appreciate, but it's an investment because once we hit level three, we get three rages a day that gives us resistance to all damage and makes us an absolute wall. So we end up with 21 AC, resistance to all damage in the game, and our saves are really, really consistent. As for our ASIs as we level up, I'm definitely gonna be looking at taking more strength because it makes our sentinel attacks more accurate, which is really key to us defending our allies. Another feat you might wanna consider is the lucky feat. Not only is it going to help us with our sentinel attacks, accuracy is key with this build, but it's also going to help us with saves. Similar to Indomitable, which we are getting to make our wisdom saves even better, lucky lets us re-roll a save as well. So if we get that natural one, we can re-roll and to hopefully get our save out of there. So how's this character going to play? Well, we're gonna find the biggest, baddest, gnarliest creature that we can see that's probably an attack-based creature. We're gonna run up to it and we're going to attack it. So on its turn is really where our strategy comes into play. Now it can attack us all at once. Go ahead. We have 21 AC and resistance to all your damage. Please knock yourself out. But what if they don't want to? What if they're an intelligent enough creature to know that attacking you is kind of fruitless? Well, they can try and run away from you, take an opportunity attack and get stuck. Those opportunity attacks are gonna be super accurate, so that's gonna be the common outcome. Now that they're stuck, well, if they're a melee creature, they have to attack you anyways. Cool, goes right back to the beginning. If they're a ranged creature, they might choose to attack an ally, but because we're, we're within five feet of them, now they have disadvantage on that attack. So we protect our allies by controlling the battlefield and just being an absolute unit. So where are weaknesses? Well, our range is definitely one weakness. Dealing with swarms, we're best at dealing with one crazy strong creature and matching them with our crazy strength. Also creatures that don't focus on attacks, creatures that are focused on saves especially mass saves. We really don't have options to deal with them. And finally, our damage output leaves something to be desired. We do significantly less damage than a normal barbarian would. But here's the thing, we protect all of our allies who take care of those problems. So I would say this is a character that you want to know your squad before using, because if your, your squad has those weaknesses, you will all have those weaknesses because they're major weaknesses for you. Now that has been my take on a heavy armor barbarian. I'd love you guys to tackle the same challenge. How would you build your heavy armor barbarian? If you wanna support the channel and get some awesome benefits along the way, check out our Patreon. But other than that, my friends, I hope you have yourselves an incredible day and I'll catch you on the next one. See you then.